So your samples would have been incubating for anything between 16 to 18 hours. The next thing to do is to turn off the incubator and then take your samples out and begin counting them. This needs to be done within 15 minutes, otherwise your samples may actually cool and this may cause the colonies to change colour and will affect your results. So once your plates are all laid out on the table, the first thing to do before you actually start counting is to check your two controls have worked. The first control is the media plate control. So this would be a sterile filter pad followed by two mils of hopefully sterile media and then topped off with your sterile membrane. Following incubation, if this plate has got no colonies on, this means that your media was in fact sterilised correctly and you can trust the rest of your results. The second control would be the filtration apparatus control. So, so following sterilisation of your membrane filtration apparatus, you would then put a sterile filter pad at the bottom of this dish, followed by clean water run through your hopefully sterilised apparatus, then topped off with a sterile membrane. Following incubation, if this plate has no colonies on, this means that you've correctly sterilised your filtration apparatus and you can trust the rest of your results. Once the controls have been looked at and checked and you can verify that they've worked, the next thing to do is to start counting your colonies. From a previous run, we found that this particular sample was heavily contaminated and we were unable to count the colonies. If you find that this is the case of your samples, you can always dilute them with clean water in order to isolate individual colonies, which are much easier to count. It's also best practice to run all your samples in duplicate. This way, when the results come out, you can compare them, and if they're very similar in counts, you can then eliminate the possibility of human error. When it's time to start counting your colonies, you need to find the plates that have between 3 and 300 on each plate. You also need to find the ones that are between 1 and 3 millimetres in diameter. This is made slightly easier by the fact that the membranes supplied with the kit have gridded squares on and each square is 3 millimetres in width. You can also use these lines to go along and count your colonies, making it a bit easier if there are a lot on the plate. Alternatively, you can actually split the plate into four quadrants and then count each quadrant individually. Sometimes colonies can actually merge together, making it difficult to count. If this is the case, you could use the hand lens supplied with the kit and use this to zoom in and decipher how many have actually merged together. The other thing to look for when counting your colonies are the yellow colonies only. These are the thermotolerant coliforms that we're looking for, which are able to produce a particular type of acid which lowers the pH of the media, rendering the colony yellow. The pink colonies are the types of bacteria that we're not really interested in, and these aren't able to produce that acid, and they remain the same colour as the media, pink in colour. Once you've decided which colonies to count, all results can be recorded in the daily report sheet found in the back of the Delagua manual.